everyone. Welcome to the Getting Outside of Your Comfort Zone and Creating Your Own Opportunities Workshop. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. Uh, you know, Sam and I are really excited to be chatting with you all today. A huge thank you to Jill, Christine, Catherine, and Cindy from the Ottawa Public Library for creating this space for us to connect with you this evening. So how is everyone doing before we get started? If you can put down in the chat in terms of energy level, how everyone is feeling on a scale of one to 10, let us know. We want to hear from you. Okay, so we got some sevens, we got some tens in the, in the chat. Again, thank you everyone so much for being here. For some context, my name is Naomi. And I'm Sam, and we're going to be presenting part one of the Career Toolkit Workshop. So this is going to be a three-part series that we put together to talk about mindset, personal branding, and relationship building to help you on your career journey. So thank you again for tuning in and investing in yourself. You know, today we'll be navigating the topic of um, changing and adjusting your mindset to align with the career opportunities that you're looking for. So drop your name in the chat and let us know what you're looking forward to learning. So I see we have Amy, we have Virginie in there, we have Yasser. Okay, this is fantastic. So now we're going so to... Yeah, go ahead. In. Sam will be yeah. diving into some of the items, you know, housekeeping before we start the workshop to ensure that we're all on the same page. Yeah, and we're very excited to have you join us. So there's just a couple of items we'll need to keep in mind just to make sure that this call runs as smoothly as possible. So firstly, please make sure that you have the career toolkit part one ready. Um, so that's what we'll be using for our exercises. And if you don't have it, that's fine. We've put all of the information in the slides for you. The second thing to keep in mind is feel free to use the chat box to send us any questions or comments, or if you wanna share any stories throughout the presentation, the chat box is a great way to be able to engage with Naomi and I. The third thing is we have a dedicated question and answer period at the end of this presentation. So that will be a great opportunity for you to also raise your hand and share, ask your questions or share anything that you've learned throughout the presentation. And finally, let's have some fun. All right, so my name is Naomi and I love building community and creative storytelling. Um, I spend my days working in the international compliance industry. And in 2017, I started a podcast called The Power of Why so that I could you know, share my platform with global leaders who are using their gifts for good in whatever industry. So I've interviewed people in London, UK, in New York City, and right here at home in Ottawa. And in 2018, Sam and I met at a networking event. Uh, we connected over LinkedIn which is a professional networking site. And shortly after we created a thriving community in Ottawa focused on professional development. And I'm Sam. I love to bring ideas to life, especially through writing and digital platforms. So by day I work as a digital marketer in the real estate industry where I find creative ways to reach our customers online. And as Naomi mentioned, we have had the privilege to bring together and build a community here in Ottawa over the past two years. And throughout this journey, we've learned so much about building community and ourselves. And none of this would really have been possible had we not stepped out of our own comfort zones. So, you know, like the mind is a very powerful tool and without the right mindset, it's very difficult for you to achieve even the simplest of things. So part of the reason that the subject is so near and dear to our hearts is because we've seen the negative effect of not believing in yourself and on the flip side, what is possible when you do. What you'll notice in the workshop is that we do spend a solid amount of time talking about self-awareness, you know, understanding your skill set, where you want to go, and even understanding your fears. So we have a few exercises that are specifically focused on this. And, you know, when we talk about mindset and creating your own opportunities, um, it is really crucial that you are constantly refining and learning more about yourself every day. And, you know, Sam and I like to think about this metaphorically, using your car your car's GPS navigator to really get to your destination, right? 
and for how we move towards our dreams and our goals. You know, when you enter your destination into your GPS, your mom's house, your workplace, the closest airport into your GPS, you are saying that this is where I want to go, right? This is where I want to be. Take me here. Show me how to get there. And like your dreams, um, you, we need to think about where we want to go in life, right? So close your eyes and think about where you want to be in your career. What do you see and believe for yourself? What is your destination? Otherwise, you may find yourself feeling overexerted, you know, going in every direction, going in circles, because you don't really have a clear target. So just putting, and, and just putting your destination isn't enough, right? When you get into your car, the GPS also requires you to identify your current position, your starting point, where you are today. And so like your dreams, in order for you to bring your dreams to life, you need to understand where you are today, who you are your values, your skill set, your fears, and sometimes even the things that are holding you back, right? And this is not the easy work, <laughs> for sure, uh, but hopefully what we share today um, helps you in the slightest. And when we have these two things in the GPS, it considers every road, how crazy or calm the traffic is, I love that feature, um, but it also checks what would be the fastest route and presents us with the full view um, but ultimately, it won't start with step one until we hit begin, until we start moving our vehicle. And just, you know, if we just stay in park and remain exactly where we are, the GPS cannot help you. Um, because you're telling it that I'm not really ready, right? So in the same in life, when we have our dreams and our goals and we don't act on it, people can't help you. Coincid coincidences can't happen, luck can't happen. Um, but when we are in motion, towards these opportunities towards our dreams things start to line up um you know people see you and they want to make introductions things start to make sense you start to see the next few steps that you need to take right um but we need to click go and start so this by any means does not mean that we have to have all the answers um that we need to know the full extent of our roadmap just like the gps you know, our job is not to know the how, it's to know the why, your why, and your your target, your goal. And uh, day by day, we're rem reminded always that we're not in full control, especially with the current situation that we're in now. So just trust the process, trust yourself, and, and believe in what's possible for you. And so in terms of um, what you can expect to learn, during the presentation, for one, stepping outside of your comfort zone, how you can do that, um, another point is to really communicate, you know, who you are and your story. Uh, we will be going over some cool elevator pitch examples in the presentation to help you develop your own um, in a way that is clear and makes a lasting impression. And thirdly, how to reach out to people in your network and folks who are also outside of your network to develop, you know, both those personal and professional relationships. Thank you, Naomi. So now let's dive right into it. So, you know, a big part of stepping outside of your comfort zone and understand is understanding where we are today and where we came from. You know, gone are the days of just filling out a job application and waiting for a response. You know, the job hunting landscape today just, just demands so much more of candidates in order for them to really stand out and get that job. So it's really become critical for you to craft your story and clearly articulate your value proposition um, to your, so that you can sell yourself to potential employees, business partners, or even clients. We really must be architects of our own careers and we have the ability to shape and define this with a bit of creativity, courage, and some audacity. You know, we're really living in an era where it's not enough to just tell people what you do. You really have to show them. Sam talked a little yeah. bit about the current job landscape and how the tables have really changed, right? That we can creatively take control of our careers, how we learn, how we communicate with others, and what we can bring to an organization um, as well. And with that said, a big part of what is required is to really get outside of your comfort zone, to stretch your abilities. Um, you know, either you are put in these stretch positions um, or once you realize what your destination is, you, you know, decide to put yourself in the position to really be stretched. And, 
and it's hard to put yourself in uncomfortable positions, right? Raise your hand, um, do speaking engagements, um, and really be uncomfortable. But I think, you know, we would be hard pressed to find people who wake up and say, how can I make my life more uncomfortable today? But oftentimes, you know, this is what's required so that we can grow and that we can make our lives better. So before we dive into this diagram, um, let's start by defining what the comfort zone is, you know, and how it feels to be in your comfort zone. Can people share in the chat how it feels, how they feel when they're comfortable or when they're in spaces that, um, where they feel like they really belong? Mm -hmm. Or areas that spaces that challenge you while well, that are not challenging when you feel safe so safe that's a great one safe and knowledgeable yeah from bernie stable stable can everyone see um can everyone see everyone else's responses in the chat right now so Bernie says, no, 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 hold on a second. Okay, let's, let's enable that then, because I'd love yeah. for everyone to see what, what everyone else is saying. So Nonsense. we have here, Bernie said, safe, knowledgeable. Virginia said, stable. Miranda says, when I know what I'm doing. Mm. He wants us feel comfortable to speak my opinion without the fear of judgment. It's huge. How about now? Can everyone see everyone else's responses? Yes. Beautiful. Okay, beautiful. So the simplest way to think of your comfort zone is as a a place or a situation where you feel safe or at ease, right? There's little to no risk. You're doing, you know, what is familiar to you. And oftentimes I like to think about when I'm in the car and, you know, you take the same route from your home to the office. And sometimes you're like, how, how did I even get to the office? Everything <laughs> just kind of goes on autopilot. So that's really doing what's familiar to you, right? So how does this relate to creating professional opportunities? By understanding, you know, the different zones here that you can see on this slide and where we find ourselves specifically, we are really able to identify our gaps and the activities that we could uh, practice, right? And we'll provide some examples later on in the presentation. So after the comfort zone, we have the fear zone. This is really where you're thinking of doing certain things, but you're faced with hesitations, such as lack of confidence, low self-esteem, you know, you find excuses, or you could even fear being judged by others. You know, if you've ever felt these things, this is totally normal and is a stage that you will feel as you start to step out of your comfort zone. You know, your mind is programmed to want to make you, to keep you safe. So anything that is out of the normal for you is sure to create some resistance within you. And it's important to know that, that the fear zone is very different for everyone. But some examples of situations where these feelings may arise are when you're doing things like approaching strangers at network, networking events. You know, if you're cold calling email or emailing decision makers in your industry or speaking up at work in meetings or just sharing your content online. These are all cases where, where we could feel some fear within us. So we'd, we'd really love to hear from you guys. Like, what are some areas in your life, in your personal life and in the employment life um, that make you feel uncomfortable or things that bring up hesitations for you? Could be something like sharing a project or putting something new into the world. Naomi said speaking up. Yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. Public speaking, that's a big one. I think that's even one of the number one fears for most people, public speaking, for sure. Anyone else? Pauline says speaking in a second, la second language. Mm -hmm. That's a great one. It forces you to kind of stretch different parts of your mind. Public speaking as well. That's a big one for sure. You know, and it's totally valid, right? And we're going to be diving deep into some strategies to help you overcome some of these things. Joseph says sharing thoughts on LinkedIn. Yup. And, you know, once you've pushed past the fear zone, the next stage that you enter into is the learning zone. 
So the learning zone is really where you start to extend your comfort zone and you're dealing with challenges and problems and you start to acquire new skills. You know, here you've really started to step out and away from your fear. But that doesn't mean that things are, that you're doing are getting less scary. It just means that you've really committed to learning and you're choosing to develop your skills to better position yourself for the opportunities that are out there. So here you're really willing to become creative and try new things. And the really important thing here is that you're trying. And this doesn't have to be really big. It can even look like signing up for an online class for a skill that you may have always wanted to learn or even reaching out to someone you look up to in your industry just to pick their brain. And even just showing up tonight, you know, that's for a lot of people is stepping out of your comfort zone and trying something new. So in the learning zone, you've really pushed well beyond your comfort zone and you're, and you're looking for new ways to grow. Thanks for that, Sam. Um, we picked out this quote. Uh, it says, if you want something you've never had, then you've got to do something you've never done. And I think, um, you know, has anyone heard this quote before? Does it resonate? Um, you know, and through these types of growth experiences, you're really taking a risk. It will feel uncomfortable. Um, and, and some of the, I'm hearing a lot of public speaking here, um, mm -hmm. speaking in a second language, public speaking. And I think, um, you know, one of the ways that, that I found, um, you know, what are some of the things that have really helped me stretch beyond that has, then always keeping in mind the audience. Like if, if you're going to be speaking on stage or in front of a crowd, just remember you are up there because you have something valuable that you need to share. And as soon as you get outside of like, how am I going to look? Am I gonna be judged? What if I say something you know, dumb or say something wrong? Just remember um, that at the end of the day, just how do we communicate that to the audience so that they're getting as much value and they can use it in their own life. And I think that's really helped me reduce my anxiety around speaking. Um, and, you know, for example, things that may stretch your comfort zone are taking a new route to work, like we mentioned earlier, you know, asking for a project that you're not 100% sure that you can do. Uh, reach out to a seemingly inaccessible person that you admire online and just saying, you know, how they've impacted your life and try stand up comedy or saying hi to a stranger as well. Mm -hmm. And in the growth zone, uh, you know, this is where you start to really push past your limitations. You're finding your purpose, setting new goals that allow you to really conquer your objectives. And before we dive into the ex exercise that Sam will walk us through, um, I wanna highlight the downside, the downside of really not stretching yourself. Um, and it is that we, that we won't grow. As professionals in the workplace and even in our personal lives, when we aren't challenged, we will likely lose interest in our work. So we can start with these small, very achievable goals that are slightly beyond what we can currently do so that we're not completely discouraged, right? So I think for folks who are really nervous around uh, public speaking, it can, um, you know, what are small ways that you can incorporate that into your daily life? Um, and then you can start to build confidence and you're like, okay, now I can do something a little bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. So now we're really going to do something fun and we're going to dive into our first activity of the session. So please, could you turn to page two in the um, worksheet? Um, we're just going to take 10 minutes to complete this activity. So I'll give you a minute just to locate it. Does everyone have the worksheet saved? We can put it in the chat again. Yeah. If not, it's all good. We have the questions up on the slides. Um, so all you need is a pen and paper at this point. All right, are you guys ready to go? Let me know a quick yes in the chat. Yes, yes. All good, Solange, but we have the questions here for you. Great, okay, so let's dive, dive right in. So the Can first I make a little question. note, Sam, first? Yeah. Um, regarding the chat. So um, Ariji and Nahom, just make sure that when you're typing in the chat, there's a little blue circular button that you can click. Change it to all panelists and attendees so everyone can see it and it's not just going to us. Yeah. Hope that makes sense. 
Okay, so I hope you all have your pieces of paper ready and your pens. So the first question is going to be, where do you feel you currently lie on the comfort zone continuum in your personal life? So do you feel like you're in the comfort zone, fear zone, you know, the learning zone or the growth zone? Where do you feel you lie personally? Just give you a minute to answer that. And if you want to share in the chat, please, by all means, go ahead. Learning zone from, like, from Yasser. I love that you're pushing yourself to like stretch and get out there, you know, it's, it's very important. Fear zone, he won. And that's perfectly fine. There's a reason you're in that, um, in that phase. There's beauty in each phase. See, learning zone, learning zone. It is possible to be in two zones at the same time, for sure. Mm -hmm. It's a spectrum, right? You know, you could, mm -hmm. it just ranges depending on where you feel you are. Learning zone, learning zone. A lot of people in the learning zone. So great job, guys. Comfort zone and learning zone. Yeah. And it depends on the situation too, right? So some areas in your personal life, maybe like going out, making friends, you could feel like you're in the comfort zone. But if you're looking to learn new skills and you're growing and developing a new hobby, you could be more in the learning zone or the growth zone. So definitely okay to be in different zones at the same time. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the next question, which is, where do you feel you currently lie on the continuum in your professional life? So again, it could be comfort zone, fear zone, growth zone, or the learning zone. See, Someone said personal life, you're in the learning zone, professional fear zone, keen to get in the growth zone. So when you're answering the questions, it's also valuable. Okay, so Sam, you've moved on to professional, right? Yes. Okay, beautiful. Think Let's about see. why. Think Also think about why you're in these zones too. Mm -hmm. and some of the first things that come up. Virginie is in the growth zone. He won in the learning zone. Great, it's good to really write these down and understand where you are so that you can be well positioned to start growing and moving past that. See, someone's in the learning zone, Amal's in the growth zone. Great. Okay, so now we're gonna start to dive deeper. Um, the third question is, why do you feel that you are currently in the zone you're in professionally? So do you feel like you could be advocating for yourself more at work? Perhaps you have a dream career or a job that you haven't had the courage to pursue. You know, here I really challenge you to be honest with yourself and dig deep because this can really illuminate, you know, why you are where you are and what is kind of hindering you from advancing to where you want to go so that you can kind of knock out that roadblock. Now I'm learning zone because I haven't taken that big step yet. And it's all about baby steps, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. when you look at the big picture and you just want to do like the big step, it can seem very daunting. But if you take little steps to get there, maybe start chipping away at it bit by bit every day on a consistent basis, it can help you get closer. And one day you'll look up and be like, oh, I'm here, <laughs> you know, look how far I've come. Mm -hmm. oh, I found purpose in the type of work I do. Amal, mm -hmm. share what, what industry you're in and what type of work you're doing. Always something to learn, 100% learn. right. RG said, I have not taken the step from my career. Mm. Bharat is in the fear zone because of the recurring emotional baggage from failures and past jobs and careers. Yeah, that's a tough one. It's like that fear that's looming. But there's definitely ways to overcome that. Miranda would love to extend your comfort zone. She's fairly new to the type of clients that you deal with. 
Great, thank you for sharing everyone. You know, we all have something to share and we can learn from each other. So now we're going to go on to the final question, which is what is the best part of being in the zone that you're in professionally? You know, often we overlook where we currently are in the journey and focus more on the destination. But in doing that, you don't really enjoy like the journey and you strip the joy away from it. So here, really take the time to look at all of the positives that could come out of where you are now, right? Do you feel like you're in the comfort zone because you're taking the time to learn more about yourself and get clear on what you want in life? You know, so just look at all the good things about where you are. I'm all find myself moving between fear, learning, and growth every time. I have one phase in my career. I'm all over the place due to layoffs in five years due to budget cuts and healthcare. Devastating. Mm -hmm. yeah. So many shifts happening. Yeah, especially at this time. Now I'm learning is limited, limitless. I don't have all the tools yet to grow as a human. But there's joy in that, right? Understanding that there's always something new to learn. Mm -hmm. and taking the time to do that. Yes, sir, is taking the time to make myself ready for the next job. That's super important. And the learning, learning zone is probably one of the best zones as you get to learn the things you're passionate about for the first time. Very true. And there's nothing like looking at something with fresh eyes, right? Okay, so we're going to keep it moving. Thank you everyone for sharing. Let's keep up the engagement. So, all right, so Sam, did you want to share a little bit about where you feel like you're in? Which yeah, for sure. You feel like you're in? Um, in my professional life, I definitely feel like I'm in the learning zone, much like um, a lot of people who shared tonight. Um, however, in my new hobby of writing that I'm trying to pursue, more like creative writing, um, I'm still in the fear zone and working out of, working on getting out of my own way, you know, just... I completely understand everyone who also feels like they're in the fear zone because there's always that fear like, oh, what if it's not good enough, right? Um, so there's definitely no right or wrong place to be on the spectrum. You just need to know where you want to go and really start to work to get there. It's a very personal journey for everyone. How about you, Naomi? Uh, for me, so in my personal life, I feel like I'm in, my, in, the, in the learning zone. It's kind of a, a new area that I've delved into that I asked to move into um, because I found in my last uh, area there was I hit a ceiling in terms of what I felt I could accomplish there so mm -hmm. I asked to move to a new area so I emailed some people um, and in this current space there's constantly as a lot of people said so many things to dive into a lot of books to read um, so I've been finding enjoyment in that Mm -hmm. And um, in, in other areas of my life, so personal life, it's like, I think this time has given us, um, you know, the space to really go back to our truth and or go back to what we enjoy doing. So I've been um, also in the learning zone, figuring mm -hmm. out what I want to, um, ho new hobbies that I want to try out these next couple months. Um, and I like that someone in here talked about Joseph, you said the learning zone is probably one of the best zones as you get to learn things you're passionate about for the first time. That is so interesting. There's a there's a man named Jay Shetty. I don't know if anyone's heard of him. And he talks about um, how there are five levels to, to really do anything. Mm -hmm. And he said that oftentimes we think that starting is doing right. People think like just get started on this new thing that you've that you've uh, learned about. But he, he begs to argue that starting is learning and research, right? Really taking the time to read what's, what's currently out there, speaking to people who are currently, you know, running their own podcasts or have their own television shows. So I think the learning part of whatever you're working on is crucial and we shouldn't go over it to mm -hmm. get right into just action, right? So I think that was, a, I just wanted to highlight that. Um, so... I think we can all agree that fear plays a role in each of our lives. Um, you guys shared, you know, where you guys feel that you currently are in your personal life. 
And fear can either cripple us or it can push us to really be better. And some of the common fears that, that hold people back, especially professionally, can be a fear of failure, fear of looking incapable in front of colleagues. I know I've been there, um, you know, not having all of the answers and especially a fear of, of change. And so if you find yourself facing any of the fears, know that you're absolutely not alone. Um, you know, does anyone feel this way sometimes at work or, or even in your personal life? And what are some things that you've done to, to overcome it? I feel like I need more time to focus about my, on myself. Yeah, That's I'm feeling problem. that way too. <laughs> <laughs> and with everything going on, it's kind of forced the whole world to stop. Yeah. So it's really created the space to really think about and take the time to look deep within. Yeah. No, Go fear ahead. is an interesting thing. It's kind of like in the horror movies. You know, I, I find that the ones that are scariest are the ones where you don't see the monster or it could be lurking at any corner because it's just this thing that always exists. As opposed to the ones where they show you the monster and you've seen the monster for like what it is. So I think that's why it's super important to define your fears so that you can face them. And this will really allow you to look the fear Look at fear for what it is so that you can overcome it. You know, Dale Carnegie famous, famously said, remember, fear doesn't exist anywhere except in the mind. So if you feel like you're stuck in the fear zone in an area that really matters to you and where you could see personal growth in your life, you can do this very powerful exercise called fear setting, which Naomi's going to explain. It's fantastic. This is definitely one of my favorite exercises to do. Anytime that I'm really contemplating a change, you know, in my life, whether it's professionally or personally. Um, Yasser says in the, in the chat before I continue, the unconscious bias that exists in marketplace about newcomers. It's mm -hmm. huge. Um, Yasser, let us send you a few resources in Ottawa um, that really support newcomers in this space. Um, hopefully it'll be va valuable for you. So uh, mm -hmm. don't forget to reach out to us. So the fear setting exercise, folks, you can go to page uh, four in the worksheet. Um, the fear setting exercise for some context was coined by a, name, a man named Tim Ferriss. He, does anyone know who Tim Ferriss is? He's a podcaster, he's an <laughs> author, among other things. And he has a really popular TED talk that went viral a couple of years ago that talks about the fear setting exercise and how it helped him really make moves forward. Yes, for our work week, perfect. Um, it also helped Sam and I make difficult decisions and overcome roadblocks in our own lives. Mm -hmm. So it's a total of three pages, as you, for those who've looked into it, as you know, um, but for the purposes of today, we're only gonna go into page one and, and really break that down. So we start by asking, does everyone have Page, is everyone at four, page four of their worksheet? Can you say, give me a yes in the comment, in the comments? Great, okay. Perfect. So I'll walk you through it. So the first question to really ask is, what if I, dot, dot, dot. This is where you really identify whatever it is that you fear, right? Whatever is causing you to hold back or stress or have anxiety or uncertainty around. Uh, for example, it could be, what if I asked for a promotion at work? Or what if I asked someone out in my personal life? What if I decided to move to a new country? What if I decided to quit this job? What if I decided to start the business that I had been thinking about for the last five years, right? So by clearly writing down what your fears are, as Sam mentioned about the monster that we can't see versus the monster that we can, we can really start to see them for what they are instead of it just staying up here, right? So I think journaling is huge. I think writing down um, on a piece of paper exactly what that, that point is or exactly what that fear is helps to, for you to come up with solutions, okay? So can everyone take some... Okay, so I'll, I'll provide an example first and then we can begin to, to work on the exercise, okay? So for the, for the exercise or the example that I'll share, um, we will use the example of asking for a project at work that you're not 100% sure that you can do. So in the first column, 
to define. You are writing down all of the fears that you can imagine happening um, or anything uncertain that would happen if you decide to take that step. So in this, there are some bullet points. You really write down like 10 to 20 things that could come up if you decide to you know, ask for a project at work that you're not 100% certain that you can do. Um, some, of the thing, some of the examples that I came up with were, for example, my boss can, may reject my ask to lead this project because they don't believe that I'm qualified, or my boss can um, ask me to justify it in front of senior management. Um, in the prevent column, this is the second one, um, you write down what can you do to prevent all of the things that you've defined from happening, right? So if, he, if my boss says, no, I don't want you to leave this because you're not qualified, what can I do to prevent or decrease the likelihood of that happening, right? So I could either build up my experiences and become so valuable that you know, my colleagues really feel it when I'm in the, when I'm not in the office, or if he asks, uh, my boss is a man, so if he asks me to justify it in front of senior management, I could really come prepared to the meeting with how I plan on, you know, taking action and what the roadmap is for the project. In the third column, the third column is to repair. So if the worst case scenario happens, what can I do to fix it after the fact, right? And so the two examples that we put down here are to, you know, take inventory of your accomplishments to date, why you're the best person for the project, um, and what you're able to bring to the table so that you have proof ready to go in case that, in case you're asked these questions. Another thing that I could do is connect with a colleague before that I really trust and practice what my pitch would be to, to senior management. So I think the, you'll be really surprised what, this exercise will paint for you, um, you know, how you're, because I found that as soon as I asked the question, what if I asked for a project that I may not 100% be qualified for, my mind just came up with all of these solutions and all the things that I could, you know, really do to prevent or repair my fear from happening. Um, and so this is the time that you guys can definitely delve into this exercise. So take a couple minutes. Um, and then we can we can talk about it in the chat as well. So um, Arije, is that how I pronounce her name? Let me know. Uh, says, what if I lost my job or the things that you worked since many years ago? How do you prevent that? So how how long has it been since you lost your job, Arije? And just so you know, not everyone can see your response in case you wanted to change that. Does anyone have any questions regarding the exercise? Any points of clarification before you get started? Can I get yes or no's in the, com in the, in the chat? Did it make sense? Not so clear. No issues, perfect. Okay. And it's such a powerful exercise. Um, like Naomi mentioned, it's three pages, but I did this for myself in a situation where I was weighing pros and cons of doing something. And just doing the one page just illuminated so much for me about the situation and which direction I needed to go. Mm -hmm. uh, Joseph, no, don't, that was just an example. The, the one that I shared, please like use an actual fear or um, something that you're currently, uh, you know, battling against right now mm -hmm. so that it's very practical and specifically for you. So for example, so, you had mentioned um, posting more on LinkedIn, it was earlier on. So you could use that as the exercise. What if I posted more, shared more content on LinkedIn? Mm -hmm. That's great. So Arije, with your um, current situation, you said you lost your job three months ago. So more so here, with the with particularly with this exercise, um, what if I 
it would be in your current situation, right? So seeing as though this has already passed, um, you should name any other fears that are associated with this, right? So what if I reach out to you people who are outside of my current network um, to see if they have any opportunities in their organization? Or what if I start to post on LinkedIn, share the knowledge and the expertise that I have so that, you know, people can really see that I'm, you know, offer expertise in this area and maybe they have opportunities in their organization. So in terms of, because you mentioned, how do I prevent that? Well, it's, it's past. So we will have to come up with a different exercise for you. Are you currently located in Ottawa? Is everyone in Ottawa on this, on this call? Lots of Ottawa folks. Montreal. Montreal. Love it. And I'm curious, Naomi, how has this exercise worked for you in the past? Um, so I know we mentioned, we kind of skimmed over it, uh, but for Sam and I, I was, I was in a very toxic work environment before this new job. Um, there was a lot of um, manipulation at work and a lot of, um, how do I even describe, a lot of gossiping that was happening amongst the teams that were around us. And it reached a point where I was dreading going to work just because it was so, it was such a toxic work environment. And, but I was, I really liked the work, right? And so I sort of justified it to myself that no, I should just stay here and, and continue to learn. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, what I was really scared of was the unknown of, you know, not knowing if, you know, what the next move would be for me. Um, so I did the exercise and um, it was the next day someone approached me at work and said, hey, I just did this interview. I actually think you would be better for it. Um, do you want to, do you want me to introduce you to the hiring manager? And mm -hmm. so that's how things aligned. It's like, as soon as I was open to addressing this current pain in my life or this fear, that's what I meant. Like the, the whole motion yeah. piece, things started to line up. And I don't think that was a coincidence. What about you, Sam? It just definitely isn't. Um, for me, very similar to you, toxic work culture. I totally relate with the dreading going in as well. Um, I think for me, the hardest thing was like my manager was a close friend. So in my like defining column, it was a lot of like, what if I disappoint him and stuff? Yeah. I didn't want to do that. Um, but going through the exercise really showed me that it would be more painful for me to like leave than it was for me to like move on. And I think after that, that's when I was like, okay, I should actually st take the step to like move on. Cause one of the fears too, was like, what if I go to a new place and I'm still unhappy, <laughs> yeah. you know? So the prevent column really allows you to become very creative on how you can address some of these pains that you this doubt in the defined column. Mm -hmm. So totally believe in this exercise. Does anyone, how's everyone doing for time? Do you need a couple more minutes? Should we stay quiet over here so that you can, <laughs> can write? Let us know. And then we have someone from the UAE. Welcome. Wow. Hi, Bharat. Welcome to Canada, kind of. <laughs> couple of minutes, perfect. So at 6.18, we will check back in at 6.20, okay?
All right, it's 620 everyone. Did you have enough time to write down at least a few things that you could put in all three columns? Remember that you can also continue the exercise and I encourage you to um, after this call as well. Is everyone okay for now? We're good to move on. Does anyone want to share maybe some of the things that they put into as their what if I dot dot dot? Let us know if you want to share in the chat. Or some things that came up as you went through this activity. Ooh. Okay, Joseph. What if I posted more on LinkedIn? Define. Fear of not being knowledgeable enough. Fear of being judged. Yep. Prevent. Uh, learning about the topics I want to spark a conversation on. Mm -hmm. Talk about fears and ask the input of people in your field community mm -hmm. and have gone or are going through those to share their experiences. Huge. So yeah. important to engage the community online and then repair. Use the platform as a way to learn more if some information I provide isn't accurate. Yep, accepting that everyone has their opinion and that their opinions doesn't like doesn't necessarily define who I am. Mm -hmm. So good. Joseph, did that did writing it out um, help with changing your perspective on sharing on LinkedIn? Definitely. Glad to hear that. Huge. I like how specific you were about, you know, when you were writing in your responses for all three columns, really important to be specific. Mm -hmm. I think another Anyone thing know? that's important to remember is that like, it's okay to fail, like when you start, right? Um, I find a lot of us, myself included, we tend to strive for perfection on the first go, but that's not how it is right you have to leave some room to do some things wrong so you can learn and then you continue to grow from there so mm -hmm. glad you're considering this as a first step i think another big thing um because we had a lot of people regarding public speaking and sharing your thoughts online um i think also what we often see from people that we admire who are doing it well, like the Tony Robbins, the Oprah Winfrey's of the world, is that we see where they are today and we say, oh wow, like <laughs> yeah. I'm going to speak and it doesn't sound like that, then I shouldn't do it at all. And it's just, that's their draft a hundred. That's mm -hmm. their draft a thousand. And then to compare our draft one, you know, your first post on LinkedIn or your first speaking engagement to what these experts are doing every day, um, is just doesn't really make any sense in the large scheme of things. So um, just remember that draft one, whatever your draft one is, is great. The fact that yeah. you even have a draft one, fantastic. So <laughs> uh, make sure to tag us in your post, Joseph, when you post on LinkedIn. Yeah. I'm happy to uh, engage with it as well. Does anyone else want to share before we continue in the presentation? Reading a book, Bernie. Wow. I love that. I'm thinking of that too. So hit me up and we can <laughs> help <laughs> ourselves grow through this together. Not good enough. I'm curious, what's the topic you want to write on as well? Publish your own website, Nahum. Self help. Very important. Okay. Okay, so we will dive back into the presentation. And you know the hardest thing about stepping out of your comfort zone is identifying your fear and facing it. And once you've done that, you're like halfway there. So we've really started to do that with the fear setting exercise. So once you guys take some time to dive deeper into that, I think it will really illuminate some more of your fears and then help you create some action plans to um, overcome them. So the next step now is to really lay out strategies to help you step and continue to walk and live outside of your comfort zone. So there's a few things that you can do here. Firstly, you can start by challenging yourself to try something new. You know, you can do things like going to an event. I know that given the current situation with COVID, we can't physically go to events, but um, there's so many virtual events through Zoom like this one 
that are happening that you could attend. And um, by being here tonight, you've really taken an important step towards stepping out of your comfort zone. So really kudos, kudos to you. Um, another thing that you could do is just saying hi to a stranger. So maybe next time you're in a grocery store, like smile and wave to someone um, just to help you exercise that muscle of being uncomfortable. You could also reach out to people online. I know we've touched a bit on LinkedIn, but that's a great platform for you to find other people who are in your industry that you could reach out to as well and to ask them questions. So it's something that's very accessible at this time. And another thing that you could do is you could start to share your work or a bit more about you online as well. So these are small things that you could try just to get those juices flowing. The second thing that you can do, which is very important, is to practice stepping out of your comfort zone. So really think of it as a muscle. You know, the more you practice like stepping out of your comfort zone, um, the stronger the muscle becomes and the more comfortable you feel doing the things that used to scare you. So to get there, you could start off by writing a list of the things that you can start to do today and then try to find ways to infuse them into your daily routine to help you get out of the comfort zone. And maybe that could look like sharing your work online every few days or even just sending one tweet um, about something that you learned every couple of days, you know, connecting or challenging yourself to connect with a new person um, in your industry every month. So it's important to really start small here and build up from there as your muscle grows. The third thing that can really help you as you start to step out of your comfort zone is to take the time to envision where you want to be in your professional career. So sit down, reflect, and envision your career goals. So whether that looks like a dream job or if you're looking to work in a, career field, in a new career field or take on a new project. Here, it's important to be specific in what you want so that you can start to outline plans to get there, um, which is the next step, just creating that action plan to help you get to your end goal. And you know, one important thing to remember is that as you do this work, um, you're not alone. So you can always rely on other people who have done it before. You can lean on them as resources. So don't be afraid to ask the person in your dream job right now um, questions and pick their brain to help you start to fill in the gaps in your plan. So if you wanted to be like a user experience designer for Shopify, for example, look for people who are ready in that field and working in that space. Um, and then connect with them via LinkedIn or email and just ask them the questions and ask them about their story to get how they got to where they are today because that could help you um, build your roadmap. And then the final thing that can really help you is to put some work into researching, um, looking for resources that will help you grow. So if you're looking for events or uh, places that you can learn, um, platforms like Meetup and Eventbrite are great to connect you with industry events um, in your city. And there's also a ton of online resources available if you're looking to learn and really grow your skills. So you could check out platforms like Coursera or Udemy, which often offer free courses as well. So you can take the time to, you know, sharpen your skills and keep, keep your skills up to date as you grow into, as you grow in your career. Another thing is you can reach out to organizations that you are interested in working with um, along your journey. So try to find someone who in the, in the current organization who you feel like you could have a connection with, um, reach out to them and connect with them and just pick their brain, ask them questions, what, how it is working in that organization, what are their values, so that when opportunities arise, you already kind of have your foot in the door, like you have a connection within that organization that can help you really enter. And finally, if you've done all the looking and searching and there's still nothing available that speaks to you and could help you on this journey, um, you could always create your own group. You know, that's what Naomi and I did. Um, 
we felt like there weren't many resources in Ottawa specifically for women of color. So we created our own group um, that was that created the environment that we were looking for. So this is really an area where you can take the initiative for your own growth and your own learning if you've looked and there's nothing else available. Create that because if there's a need that you're feeling that you're feeling, um, it's very likely that there's other people who are seeing that gap as well. Those are fantastic, Sam, especially creating your own group if there's nothing else available right now. Um, mm -hmm. And I think even if you were to start sharing that with your current network and then through word of mouth or even creating a LinkedIn group, um, people are always searching for things in groups where their interests align. So you'll exactly. have, I don't know, people from all across the world looking to be a part of it. So don't hesitate to do that as well. So has anyone heard about an elevator pitch? Does everyone know what an elevator pitch is? Tell us in the chat, say yes, no, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Solange says yes, Miranda, yep. Bernie, Amal, yes, yes, yes. Do you guys have an elevator pitch ready if we were to ask you? Tell us, yes, no. Ricardo says, nope, never thought to make one for myself, says Miranda. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, great, perfect. Need to redo mine. Yeah, I think this is always, <laughs> we're always evolving as human beings. We're always evolving in our career and our personal lives. So um, updating it is definitely, definitely makes sense. So- And you're in the right place. <laughs> yes. Um, so basically, imagine that you are in an elevator, for, so, for folks who don't know an elevator pitch, uh, with someone who is doing amazing work and they ask you, you know, who are you? What do you do? And because you're in an elevator, um, you don't have much time to really dive into all of the details about the amazing person that you are and all the wonderful things that you do, um, which is why it's really crucial to have like a, 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 you know, a high level and really craft and refine your 30 second, 30 to 60 second elevator pitch, right? Um, so it really talks about your background, your experience and how you can help understand, how you can help others really understand who you are and what you do. So as you put together your elevator pitch, please remember that keeping it as simple and as true to yourself is the way that you'll be memorable, right? You, oftentimes like, so you you know when folks are sort of being ingenuine around what they do and, and who they are, but the people that really stand out are the ones that are really, you know, have taken the time to to prepare something that is meaningful and also outlines what they're passionate about. So Sam will delve into the components, what we believe are the components of a, of a strong elevator pitch. Feel free to craft it the way that you want, though, um, and what you can really include as you create your own. So there are a few elements that every pitch needs to have as you start to build out your elevator pitch. So there's really no one size fits all approach, but you can start to build it out using the following framework. So there's a couple of key questions you'll need to ask. First, firstly, the, you'll need to answer the question, who are you? You know, this is a very big existential question, which Naomi and I have both struggled with. But to break it down and to compress it, you can start by writing one sentence about yourself. So for example, introduce your name, what you love, and what you're passionate about. So for example, if you're a marketer like me, you could say, hey, I'm Sam, and I love to help brands tell their stories. Or I'm passionate about writing and helping brands craft compelling stories. You know, this is where you can try to encapsulate what you do in like one sentence. The second question that you'll need to answer is what do you do and, or like what do you offer? So using your passions as a guide, here write a sentence or two about how you like to spend your time. So if you spend most of your time balancing sheets and accounting, state that. Let people know what, um, you, what value that you offer professionally. The third thing that you'll need to answer as you form the basis of your pitch is answer the question, what problem do you solve? You know, identify your expertise and what you're known for in your peer circles and the circles that you occupy. So start to think about like, what do people often ask you about? 
and it could even be guided by the degree or your field of study if that's the field you're still working in um, this can really help you navigate um, the problem that you solve so for example if some if lots of people come to you asking for tax help or help with branding then that could help you understand the pro problem that you're solving and once you've answered these three questions you've really got the foundation of your pitch the next thing is to start to focus on the other person you know elevator pitches are generally delivered in in-person situations such as an elevator or networking event which means that the other person it means that it involves someone else right so here is a chance for you to ask a question about something that the other person could be curious in um, to help you build that connection between the two of you so if you're at a networking event and you're talking to someone who works in finance or any other field you could open it up by asking them you know what is your favorite part about your job and that's a great way to get that conversation flowing and the fifth and final thing that you want to do especially if you've had like a juicy conversation and you want to keep that connection going um, ask the other person how you can further build the relationship and express how you can stay in touch so you could ask them hey can we connect on LinkedIn? Can we exchange emails or business cards? You know, it's very important for you to leave that door open if this is someone you want to continue to build that professional or like not so professional relationship with. And once you have all of these elements in place, um, the most important thing that you'll need to do is practice, practice, and practice some more because you really need to know your elevator pitch like the back of your hand so that it flows naturally and seamlessly whenever you need to use it. You know, your elevator pitch is who you are and what you value. And people often do business with people who they work with, uh, people who they like, and people that they trust. And there are many unique ways to craft an elevator pitch, but you need to find the structure that is most unique and tailored to you. And one way of doing this is by weaving in your passions and what you love doing into your pitch. So for example, can we go to the things? <laughs> um, for example, if you use the first, um, first template that we put here, um, you could fill it in and say, hey, my name is Solange and I help brands through digital marketing. Or, hey, my name is Nahum, I'm passionate about writing and I love working on things related to marketing. So these templates here are a great starting point if you're looking for the right direction to go. Um, and it can really help you nail down your elevator pitch and present who you are and what to do in an easy to understand way. So this is where we're going to delve into our final exercise of the session um, by crafting your own elevator pitches. So please could you turn to page eight in the worksheet to get started. And we'll also have the questions up for you guys. So just let me know in the chat whenever you're ready. All you need at this point is your pen and paper. So just say yes when you're good to go in the chat. Perfect. Murdoch says Lots yes. Miranda says yes. Peggy yes. Wan says yes. Amazing. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys some time to answer the first three questions. Um, I'll give you about five minutes just to start to get the flow and you know the structure of your elevator pitch going, and then we'll regroup and. If you're comfortable, feel free to share your elevator pitches with us in the chat. So we'll regroup in about five minutes. And in the meantime, let us know if you have any questions with regards to the exercise.
So how is everyone doing so far? Let us know how those questions are shaping up while well, the answers are shaping up for you guys. Okay, from Bernie. Hello, I'm Bernie and I'm passionate about writing. I believe in clear and simple language and messages. In my current book, I try to inspire others to take actions towards their goals. This is a very solid start and I love that you put um, what you value in there as well and what you believe in. So that is very important. I love Great this, mm -hmm. I love this. And something I want to note about your, your pitch, um, it's super powerful to also mention projects that you're working on and what you have in the go because it, it gives the person that you're communicating with um, things to, like, I have a question to ask you now. Do you know what I mean? And there are ways that we can yeah. build a conversation from here. So I love that you've outlined that and you started with what you're passionate about. It's huge. I find the the pitches that are super, that feel very robotic are when you say, hi, my name is this and I do this for a living. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you show me personality. So I, I love that. Yeah. Great job. <laughs> Um, also, I think another two of the main questions that I usually get around elevator pitches are, especially at a networking function, um, can we get in the chat, like how often do you guys go to networking events? How often do you go to networking events? And how do you feel about them in general? Almost never, Almost Colleen never. says. Do people like going to networking events? Bernie says Almost, Almost never. never. Some of the questions that he wants is never interesting. Once mm -hmm. a month, Amal. Um, oftentimes, Not the often. the popular questions that come up when you're at networking events is what, especially if the person that you want to talk to is currently having a conversation with someone. You know, what's the best time to hop into a conversation? What's a great icebreaker? But also when you know it's time to exit a conversation and um, say, you know, what's the best way to connect with you? I think those are the most challenging parts is in terms of entering and then um, mm -hmm. how do you leave respectfully? Yeah. And so when you're entering, I think if the person that you wanna speak with is having a conversation with a group and their body language is sort of open and you feel like they're they're engaged to have more people enter, that's a usually a good, uh, good sign. Um, and to leave, it's always like, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat. Um, what's the best way to connect with you as, yeah. as Sam mentioned in the call to action? Interesting. Most people said almost never. Are you guys interested in going to events? Let us know. We're going to continue. We're, let's continue with the presentation. Okay. So the final thing that we want to leave with you guys is that, you know, once you've crafted your elevator pitch, you have it on deck like Bernie here, um, it is great to start looking for those opportunities. And one thing to remember is that there's always someone linked to each opportunity. So even when you see job postings on LinkedIn or on monster.com, um, there's someone who is behind that posting. And it then becomes your job to find that person and start to build that relationship in a meaningful way. You know, figure out ways that you can provide value to these individuals. Um, if you have a mutual connection, it's always great to ask them for a warm introduction as well. And in our next workshop, we will really be diving deeper into strategies for doing this. And there are so many, so this quote as well, networking is not just about connecting people. It's about connecting people with people, people with ideas and people with opportunities. And I think this is so rich um, because it, as Sam mentioned in terms of providing value to the individuals that you're networking with and building relationship with, you can do it in so many different ways. You can do it through information. You can do it by introducing them to people in your network that you know could really serve them or that they could learn from um, and opportunities that would be of interest, right? So if I know Joseph is interested in posting more on LinkedIn and I have a friend who loves actively posting on LinkedIn, I could make that connection so they could learn from each other. And um, you know, and what Michelle is saying here in the quote, 
there are so many layers of really getting outside of your comfort zone when it comes to building relationships, right? And there is no one size fits all, um, but hopefully, you know, in our next, in part two and part three of the workshop um, series, we will be talking specifically about building relationships. Um, so hopefully, if, you're in, if that's something that you're interested in, make sure to join us on, on June the 2nd. Does anyone have questions? So Colleen, you said not quite done part three. Is that? Oh, for the pitch? That's okay. That you can exercise? take some time after the call to really dive deep into the pitch and um, start to refine it and practice it with people around you as well. Like your family, once you get more comfortable, look out to friends and then like um, your peers and colleagues. So let us know if you have questions. Um, we are done with the presentation part. So if you want to actually like speak and let us hear your voices, you can raise your hand. Um, we'll unmute you and then you you can ask your question or share your story or anything that you'd like to share with the group. You guys have been so engaged tonight. It's been fantastic. Yeah. Does anyone want to raise their hand to ask a question or or share something that they learned this evening? Yeah, biggest takeaways. Thanks, Miranda. We love that you learned something Thank from you. the presentation. Oh, and for those of you who are looking to get started on LinkedIn, one great thing you could even do after the session is just go and share your key takeaways so that if people yeah. who weren't here, they're still able to learn through you and the mm -hmm. content that you're putting out. So that's a small, that's a small win to help you start to get out of your comfort zone. That's actually how Sam and I met. We both attended a networking event in Ottawa. Um, and that evening, Sam went on LinkedIn and she wrote down three things that she learned at the event. And I saw it, I said, huh, Sam seems really interesting. <laughs> and we didn't actually get a chance to meet in person. But when I saw that, um, I sent her a message and that's how all, that's why even we're here today. So mm -hmm. um, there's so many cool things that could really come out from sharing what you've learned at different events online. Um, so we hope, hope that you do that. Joseph raised his hand. Let, let us unmute you. Hey, Joseph, you can talk. Yeah. Hey. Can you hear me? Hi, yeah, we can hear you. Awesome. Uh, thank you again for today. It was uh, a great section. And uh, Naomi, I have a question for you. Sure. Uh, you said you started the podcast, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like, how long have you been doing it for? And like, how did that, how did the idea come to be? That's a great question, Joseph. Thank you. Um, so I started the podcast in 2017, in August. So it's been almost three years now. Um, and initially what prompted me to start was I was, you know, meeting with professionals when, while I was in university and I was learning so many things about people in finance and people in consulting. Um, and I was going back and sharing with my friends based off my notes. But, um, you know, as I was sharing what I was learning, some people encouraged me to record them and share okay. it on a more like public platform. And so I started looking into how I could do that and and just started interviewing people. So um, I had been thinking about it for a while before I started because I was kind of scared to put out these interviews. But over time, I just like, no, if this is something that I really want, if for everyone in the chat, like if public speaking is something that you really want, if um, writing a book is something that you really want, whatever it is, you, if you want it so bad, you can just take those little steps to get started. So I looked into how I could go about doing that. And then here we are today. It's been three years. Nice. Are you, are you interested in starting one, Joseph? Yeah, I've been thinking about doing uh, either like a vlog series or like a podcast. I'm still thinking it through. But yeah. uh, it's just now kind of merging my ideas together and like actually deciding which path I'm going to take. But mm -hmm. it's definitely an option out there. Was, yeah, that your, was that the exercise or the question that you did for the fear setting one? By chance? Uh, for the first setting one, it's more about uh, what I'm actually doing for work and like out of fashion, which Got is uh, basically like working with 
brands and creating content, video content for now. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but yeah, I'll be looking for ways to like share more, more things on like freelancing and, and et cetera. So. It's the yeah, perfect that's time. Great. Cause so many um, people want to learn. And as you start to set it up, like there's so many um, people that you can drop on, like even Naomi here is asking her questions on what she's done. Um, I find when you reach out to people who are like further down on that journey, you can learn so much and like avoid so many like mistakes and pitfalls just by talking to people. So that's a, that's definitely something you can do as you grow. Yeah, exactly. I'll definitely reach out after this for sure. Yeah, Dissef. I can't wait to see your content online. Mm-hmm. Sure, thanks. <laughs> you, thanks. You're putting me here. to the test. Huh? <laughs> I'm following up. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Joseph. Thank we'll you. talk to you soon. Yeah, no problem. Have a good one. You, you too. too. Bye. Does anyone else want to hop on? Any questions that we have in the chat? See Virginie's jumping out of the comfort zone tomorrow, so that's fantastic. Okay, if there are no more questions, Sam and I will will close up. We have a few more slides about just saying thank you and how you can follow up with us as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, so thank you everyone. Thank you so much for really taking the time to be with us today. In this workshop, we delved into strategies that really include, you know, pitching yourself for opportunities, getting outside of your comfort zone, and, you know, with the elevator pitch, how to get in front of the right people with your unique message. And so we also wanted to share part two of the series. We, it will be taking place on May the 19th, so it's exactly two weeks from today. We will be talking about personal branding. So for the folks who, ta- who are asking about LinkedIn, this will be the perfect session. Uh, We're going to be going over what is a personal brand, how you can build your own in 2020. We'll also be going over how to take inventory of your current passions and skills. And thirdly, strategies to really start showing up as the person that you want to, you know, that you would like to be online while building your skill set. Again, we just wanted to say thank you to Jill, Christine, Catherine, and Cindy from the Ottawa Public Library for bringing us together tonight and really creating the space for us to come together and connect. So as we mentioned, we'd love to keep the conversation going after this. So please, could you please feel free to add um, Naomi and I on LinkedIn. I'm Naomi is Naomi Haile. I am Samuel Mobe on LinkedIn. And we would love to see you all at our next events. You know, um, tonight we really built that foundation because if you don't have your mindset right, it's really hard for you to progress and start to do the things that you want to uh, build and create in this world. So the next session will be diving deeper into the personal branding, as Naomi mentioned. And then the final session would be going like outside from you and helping you connect with others and build those meaningful relationships. So thank you for coming tonight, everyone. We've loved how engaged you've all been. We've learned so much from all of you as well. So thank you for sharing your time and your energy with us tonight. Thank you everyone for coming. And we finished about five minutes before planned. So um, hopefully you guys can actually, um, you know, click the links in the chat for our next sessions. We would love to really see you out there. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Have a good night guys. Bye.